Today I'm cooking khao yam, which is very similar to nasi kerabu in Malaysia. Khao yam is a very popular dish in southern Thailand. The rice has a signature brilliant blue color and is served with freshly chopped vegetables and a special budu sauce. So healthy, very nutritious and super satisfying. While it is usually enjoyed as an everyday breakfast in southern Thailand, I tend to consider it as a feast as there are a lot of ingredients to prepare and the result is so worth it. This recipe is for 8 to 10 servings. Before starting, we need to make sure that we have the mandatory ingredients for the authentic khao yam taste. They are budu sauce, or in Thai we call it nam budu khao yam. It is a fermented anchovy fish sauce that is specially seasoned for khao yam. I bought it from Thailand, but it is available online in Malaysia as well. It is savory, salty, and full of umami. Most of its flavor comes from a little drizzle of this seasoning. Fish floss, which can be substituted with grounded dry shrimp. In Malaysia, deep-fried whole fish is usually served instead. It is also known as sambal ikan or nasi kerabu, roasted coconut that is made into powder form, which has a similar preparation to gurise without the pounding step. These three ingredients can be bought online in Malaysia. Finely chopped torch ginger flour for a fresh taste in each bite. And finally, the sour ingredients in our khao yam. I use green mango. If preferred, sour pomelo or lamb juice work as well. Let's start off with cooking the blue rice. Add 30 grams of fresh butterfly pea flour into a heat-resistant bowl and pour 250 ml of hot water to submerge them completely. This is the natural way we used to traditionally extract the blue color from the flowers. Set it aside for 10 minutes while we wash the rice. Add 3 cups of Thai jasmine rice to the rice pot for a lovely fragrance and fluffy texture. Then wash the rice. Rinse and drain it twice to roughly remove excess starch and debris. Alright, set it aside. Our butterfly pea flower should be done now. Give it a stir, pressing the flower to the side to encourage more of the natural color to come out. Remove the flowers and discard them. Pour the blue water to the rice pot through a strainer to remove any residual or debris from going in. This amount of water is not enough to cook the rice, so I am adding another 300 ml of water. Please follow the instruction from your rice pot when adding more water. Stir to mix until the water is even in color. It is so pretty now. Add half teaspoon of salt to taste. Stir again to dissolve the salt. Level the rice properly. I like to check the water level the old school way by measuring with my finger. It should be just about 1.5 inches above the rice. Wipe the rice pot dry on the side and bottom before placing it in the cooker. Cover the pot and wait for about 15 to 20 minutes. While waiting for the rice to cook, let's cut the fresh vegetables. You can use any crunchy vegetables that can be consumed raw. Khao yam is usually served with small serving of different vegetables. For today, I have 7 strands of long beans. Cut the tips off and then into one third. Align each strand to get a bunch. This quickens the slicing. Now, chop them into small and thin pieces, like this. Discard the tip on the other side. When done, place them on a large platter. Continue with one green mango. Remove the tips. Oops, the mango is already yellow on the inside. Peel off the skin. Although yellow, the mango is still quite firm, so it should still be sour. Carefully chop around the mango to make straight cuts. It's okay to do this slowly. 
Then carefully slice the mango straight down with your index finger guiding the blade to get long strip of mango. This technique is exactly how we cut green papaya for som tam or papaya salad. Alright, it's done. Place the mango strip together on the platter with long beans. You can cut it into half if it is too long. Let's continue with about 150 grams of cabbage. Slice them into very thin strips until they resemble shredded cabbage. Since each strip is too long, I am chopping them into three parts. This makes it easier and more enjoyable to mix and eat. Place it on a vegetable platter. Repeat this step with 100 grams of purple cabbage. Remove the core as it is too firm. Slice the purple cabbage thinly. While it is not common to use purple cabbage with khao yam, I added it for a more colorful dish. You can also use carrot or cucumber strips instead. Cut into half since the strips are too long. Alright, all done. Add them to the platter. By now, our rice should have finished cooking. Once cooked, open the cover. Look at that. It's so pretty. Give it a gentle stir to loosen the rice. This makes it fluffier with the beautiful individual greens. Cover the rice pot and let it keep warm for another 10 to 15 minutes. Let's go back to cutting the vegetables. Chop 12 red bird eye chili in two small pieces. The amount can be adjusted according to your tolerance level. I recommend using food grade glove when handling the chili to prevent staining your hand with capsaicin which can irritate the skin. Chili flake can be used as well if fresh chili is unavailable. Set it aside in a small separate bowl to use as a condiment. Next, cut two tart ginger flower or dog dala in Thai or bunga kantan in Malaysia. Slice only the flower into five strips. And this cut the stem as it is too fibrous. This ingredient is important for the fragrance and herbal coolness in each bite. Just by cutting it, I am hungry already. Since the strips are too long, chop into smaller strips. And add them to the platter. Lastly, pluck about 30 grams of Vietnamese basil leaves or daun kasong. It gives a very fragrance and fresh taste to the khao yam. If unavailable, it can be substituted with sweet basil leaf or kaffir lam leaves. This cut the hard stem and yellowish leaves. Chop it finely, like this. And place them in a separate bowl as the condiment. Now we are done. Let's assemble the khao yam. Fill a small bowl with blue rice. Lightly press the rice to get a nice shape. Place the bowl upside down on the plate and gently tap it to get the rice out. Then add a little bit of each ingredient around the rice. Add 1 tablespoon of roasted coconut, 2 tablespoons of fish floss, half teaspoon of chopped bird eye chili, half tablespoon of Vietnamese basil, 15 grams of raw bean sprout for crunchiness. 1 tablespoon of chopped long beans. 1 tablespoon of budu sauce in a saucer. I recommend using a small amount first for one serving as it might be too salty if too much is added at once. 15 grams of cabbage. 15 grams of purple cabbage. 15 grams of mango, 15 grams of dot ginger flour. For added protein, you can also add half hard boiled egg to the khao yam if preferred. And we are done. This is the complete set of my version of Thai khao yam. 
It's appetizing, aromatic, and mouth-watering. Here's how to enjoy cow yam after assembling it. First, pour the budu sauce all over the rice and around the vegetable. Mix everything together until well combined. It looks so colorful and tasty. Also very fragrant. Okay, this should be good. Let's eat. Wow, it is so delicious. It's crunchy, full of deep umami flavor. And all the herbal flavor cleanses the palate for the next bite. The slight sourness adds more appetite and make each bite so addictive. You can have as many servings as you want as it is 50% vegetable, making it such a nutritious dish. Enjoy! This is Home Cooking with Somjit. Thank you and bye-bye!